Despite losing the race for governor last November, Democrat Andrew Gillum won a lot of influence in Florida, and he doesn't intend to waste that as we head into 2020. He came to CBS4 today to make an announcement in an interview with Jim DeFeedy. When Barack Obama was on the ballot, Democrats had a registration advantage of nearly 100,000 more registered voters than Republicans. When I was on the ballot uh, this November, uh, that advantage has shrunk to around 250,000, and it continues to tighten. And the truth is, is I recognize that everybody who's registered to vote doesn't necessarily vote, but it certainly helps to have more marbles on the table. That way, if some of them roll off, it doesn't cost you the election. And in a state that is a 1% state, it's critical that we get back to the basics of re-engaging voters. So to Today we're going to uh, we're announcing uh, that we, along with our partnership, are going to commit to registering and re-engaging a million voters in this state in advance of the presidential election, so that we flip Florida blue in the presidential race and put us on a pathway to winning uh, in future elections in this state. Some people thought that you were going to <laughs> announce a candidacy for president. Yeah. It seems like there's a pretty large field. Why aren't you running for president? Well, I tell you, I'm taking care of home. I think the best role that I can play at this time, having come off of a two-year grueling race here uh, in one of the swingiest swing states out there uh, in the country, uh, is doing everything that I can to prepare the state of Florida to go blue. Um, I've learned a lot. I came within you know 32,000 votes of getting elected out of over 8 million votes cast. Uh, we had over 70,000 volunteers taking action on behalf of our campaign. Over a million conversations we opened in two-way text message exchanges with people in the state. We want to turn that apparatus, those resources, into good, not for a single election cycle, but enduring by helping to build a more progressive base of voters here in Florida. After the 2018 election, uh, there was immediately it seemed like a gravitational pull towards there were three candidates yourself Stacey Abrams mm -hmm. in Georgia and Beto O'Rourke in Texas yet all the focus seemed to immediately shift to Beto O'Rourke and whether or not he would run for president is there an element of white privilege that's at play here in which I didn't hear a lot of discussions you know with the same sort of fervor about you about Stacy as I as we immediately heard about Beto yeah well I would tell you I know Stacy very well we were friends and she may uh, still get in the race years. yeah I mean but, I, but you I get would my encourage point. her consideration but, but you get my point I do is, is there is there an element of, of either benign or subtle racism at play yeah. here or white privilege well I mean I don't think any of us uh, can uh, uh, I'd be dishonest if I didn't say that there's privilege in this but the point is is that I'm not interested uh, in, in pursuing that track. It appears that Beto is as he's now entered this race. Um, um, I'm used to working uh, and post uh, my my race, I think the best work I can do is by coming back and Florida, making Florida ready for whoever the Democratic nominee is for president. We can't wait for that person to be decided before we get to work. We got to get to work now if we plan on winning this state. Can Democrats win Florida or even the larger field across the United States if it nominates two white men to run for president and vice president? Well, I tell you, I think whoever makes it through the process, because this is the pressing uh, that is about to, to go on between the candidates, I believe will be the right candidate to move us forward. Um, it is my hope um, that that candidate, uh, if it were a white male, um, or frankly, whomever the candidate is, uh, we would be looking for a ticket that represents the fierce diversity of our party and also the diversity of this country. Um, I think it is a hallmark right now within the Democratic Party that we believe in representative government and rep represent, uh, representative government, but also representational, which means that we got to reflect the diversity of this country. Uh, and if we do that, I think we win. So I, I go back to the question, can two white men on the ticket win? the Democratic nomination and win a general election? Well, first of all, all white men aren't created equal. <laughs> they all, well, they're, 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 there's not a monolith. Everybody brings a different set of experiences to the table. And I think we got to evaluate people based off of what they bring to the table. I'm not one to disqualify a ticket uh, over something like race uh, alone. I think it's got to be a combination of factors. But I do believe that whoever the Democratic nominee is will look for a diverse, qualified ticket, and most importantly, a vice president who is prepared to assume the office of presidency.